Um, um, I'm sorry, this is James. Sorry, that was Wayne. James, you're on CFRA. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, I think, the, okay, the Kadir family, back when Kretchen was prime minister, had gone over to Pakistan, had claimed their entire passports to the entire family, had been lost or stolen multiple times, and went to the Canadian embassy to have them replaced. The working theory, of course, is that they were like passing Canadian passports to al-Qaeda terrorists. When they came back to Canada, the, uh, the entire uh, Qaeda family, except for Omar, but including the son that was crippled fighting jihad over in Afghanistan and Pakistan, gave us a little lecture, I think it was on Global News, where they talked about how they hated Canada, that we were all gay and drug users, and she didn't want to bring her kids up here, but she would make the Canadian justice system pay for her son's uh, expensive rehabilitation. She also said that she would be very proud if some of her sons became martyrs, which means killed uh, innocent people. That's exactly correct. And uh, one, one might notice that that clip is as difficult to find on the Internet as is the 150 hours of David Suzuki warning thing about nuclear winter in the 1970s. <laughs> Somehow these clips, I mean, I watched those shows. I watched him on CBC all through the 70s telling us how we were all going to die in an ice age because of industrial pollution. David and Suzuki find, said David Suzuki oh, said that? Oh, my God. Really? Oh, my God. Every, in the, I, I'm, I'm stunned that you don't remember it. He no. Was, he, nuclear winter was his cause. That's how he made his money was warning about nuclear winter and we had to stop all industrial production because the slip from the factories was going to block out the sun as if it was like a plot from the Simpsons. But, but in any case, the, 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 the point is that these particular uh, inconvenient facts seem to get scrubbed. Well, now you have, a good, you, you have a good mind for, for history here. Um, do you know what year it was? I remember that uh, Omar Cotter's father was in prison in Pakistan. And Kretschia went over and got him out. Kretschia yes. personally. Well, he didn't get him out. He, he, he obviously lobbied on his behalf because yes. the father was released shortly after Kretschia's visit. Right. Am I not correct in that? You are absolutely correct. Now, I'd like to speak about the specific, I mean, I, that's background. The specific issue you're bringing today, I think, needs a more of a meta-level solution. The fact is, and this, this is, a, uh, this is going to cover a broad range of problems with these relevant, related issues. The fact is, this is a military issue, not a criminal justice one. And I think that the Western world is torpedoing itself. And this especially goes for Obama when he had his troops read, uh, uh, Taliban, captured Taliban Miranda rights. You cannot, like, the, when you're looking at a criminal justice situation in your own country, you, you, you know, there's all kinds of special rights and privileges uh, that are afforded to the accused. And that's as it should be, and I don't object to that. Because these people don't have a political agenda, which is an overall attempt to destroy us, our way of life, and our system itself. It's people acting in a criminal manner to advantage themselves financially as a general rule, right? All right. Now, this is the problem here is that we are at war with Islam and that Islam has declared itself. And you can go online and you can watch on YouTube probably 20 hours of massive schools of kids as young as seven and eight that are being trained, marched, drilled in weapons, and taught to kill the unbeliever. This is actually happening, and we're seeing videos, you've seen it in the Islamic State, of little kids decapitating and shooting uh, people in the Islamic State. And that's, and the Islamic State is now bigger than what? Belgium and several other European countries, especially now that parts of North Africa have been taken by al-Shabaab and have joined, have now called itself Islamic State Africa. We're talking about a very serious war here of very large proportions of which there is an incredible sleeping army in Western countries. And if we are going to look at this as a criminal justice system and discuss individuals like Cater and give them $10 million and give them all the rights that you, you afford an actual regular criminal, we will lose. It will be over and our systems will be gone. This is, this is a fact of history. This isn't even alarmist. The, the, the fact that we've enjoyed a, a hundred years or so in the Western world since the end of World War I and the death of the Ottoman Empire of incredible, unparalleled freedom, liberty, growth, technology, and, and liberty of thought, that's the exception of history, not the rule. We're going back to the rule because people will not understand there's a difference between a criminal justice approach to a problem and a military one. And if we don't take a direct, declare this war, recognize this war, and act and what put ourselves saying, in a what war. What you're saying it, essentially is that there's a vast difference between a guy who holds up a bank, he just wants the money, and, and a terrorist who wants the country. 
That's exactly correct. Thanks and for the that's call. That's the reason I... that there are different approaches to these problems. Thank you, James. Thank you.